Let's start with introductions. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, my name is Riley and I draw. Um, I'm working on a comic right now. I don't have a title for it yet, okay. but it's pretty cute. Uh, mostly I just post doodles on the internet and people seem to enjoy them. Okay. Can you tell us anything about your comic or is it all hush hush right now? Um, it's not hush hush. It's mostly just like little bits and pieces right now. It's in the like, it's in the doodle stage, I like to call it. Right. But uh, so far I'm looking at something involving a chef. I think it would be a funny idea to uh, have like, a chef drama, but the chef just happens to work in uh, the American Girl doll, like doll cafe kitchen, <laughs> instead okay. of like actual kitchen. But he like wants to be a real chef. Okay, yeah, I've never, I've never been to the American Girl doll cafe. What, what, it, what is it? I've never been either, but my roommate was telling me because she used to be obsessed with American Girl dolls. But it's this like whole like almost Disneyland-esque like restaurant in the American Girl doll store where they have like actual food, but they also have food for the dolls, like little play pretend food, like you can order for your doll. And all of the different dolls have like personalities and stuff. So they have like a favorite food, I'm assuming. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, it, so kind of like a like a build a bear like yeah like a build a bear you know a interactive yeah face. <laughs> okay kind of kind of thinking about it. I think they had like an SNL skit that was like took place at the American Girl Doll Cafe so did they? I think they did but that that's interesting yeah I've is that it like every American Girl Doll store no i know it's like a i don't know it it seems to be an important part of doll culture but i don't know if it's at every i also don't know how many american girl doll stores there are in the world could there be like only one or many <laughs> surely there's more than one i mean like there's gotta be if it's this much of a phenomenon yeah if they're if they're talking about it like on snl there's gotta be more than one but I've never seen one. I've been to a lot of malls. I've never seen an American Girl doll store. Me neither. I've seen lots of Build-A-Bears. I've seen lots of toy stores. Yeah. Build-A-Bear. Build -Bear. Hmm. Yeah, maybe Build-A-Bear should have a restaurant. <laughs> Way cooler. I wasn't, I wasn't much of a doll kid growing up. Yeah, same. I I was more of a bear kid anyways, so. Well, I guess in unless you consider, like, action figures dolls because yeah, i i did I, like those as a kid but i kept them in the box <laughs> how could you do that like i i did not have that kind of self-control as a kid well it's not it wasn't a self-control thing it was just my parents were also nerds so they were like oh keep them in the box because one day they'll be worth a lot of money even though they're not right I would, i'll play with them and keep them in the box <laughs> Yeah, I've I've heard that like saving the box is a thing. Like, you know, taking it out, playing with it, but also like keeping the box in case you want to resell mm -hmm. it one day. I know people do that with like Legos. They also keep the little books. Yeah. The the like instructions to teach you like how to put it together. That people save that in case they want to resell. Mm -hmm. But that that kind of reminds me of of comics too, where where like. You know, when I was a kid, people would say, like, oh, save your comics because they're going to be worth a ton of money one day. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare because people don't realize that, like, the reason the old ones are so valuable is because they're rare, because they weren't as many produced. And yeah, now we so live in a time of, like, mass production where, like, these toys, there's millions of these toys. They're not yeah, as... They're, they're not there's as... There's no uh, rarity anymore. There's no scarcity. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's no... <laughs> You know, there's not as much, like, demand, too, as, like, mm -hmm. those toys that were destroyed or in a landfill or something. Yeah. From, like, you know, other generations. 
Mm -hmm. But it's okay because I'm saving them because I have a hoarding problem. Uh -huh. Me alone will keep toys out of the landfill. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I only collect comics that I'm planning on reading or. Yeah, me too. I, I never buy to resell. Yeah, I, I'm just so sentimental that I, I get attached to everything that I get. So like, I don't think I could even if I wanted to. Same. I remember as a kid, like I, I did feel bad about getting rid of my toys. That, that's something Toy Story did to me. I blame yeah, Toy Story. Yeah, makes me feel guilty. Yeah. Like, for rid of anything. Like, oh, like, Woody, no. Woody thinks I don't love him anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, like, oh, this inanimate object now has feelings because this movie told me so. <laughs> yeah, so I had a little bit of that as a kid. I also, I wrote down some questions, too. You want to do Ooh, yippee. one of the questions? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm opening up my desk. Okay. It's like a wizard desk. I needed something to do with my hands or I'll go crazy. <laughs> okay. What are your goals with your art? Hmm. I don't know. It used to be when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a storyboard artist for uh, Cartoon Network specifically. But, you know, any any job would have been really cool. But then I went to uh, I went to design school because that's what everyone tells you to do if you're even like remotely creative in high school. And I took a graphic design class and dude, I hated it. I hated it so bad. And I know that graphic design isn't the same as, like, making cartoons at all. But, I don't know, that put a bad taste in my mouth it, about, like, commercializing my art. You know what I mean? So now I'm just kind of, like, I don't know, it'd be nice to print stuff and just get it around. Yeah, I also had dreams of being an animator when I was a kid. But... Those went out the door. Like as soon as I found out, like how um, intensive it is and how yeah. like how long it takes to animate, I was like. So that too, it, it wasn't just the like me hating design school. It was also just uh, like the the it's so labor intensive. Like right. the whole even even just doing like the the like sticky note storyboards, you have to be like spitting out jokes like a mile a minute. Or else, like, you're of no use to them, you know? <laughs> yeah, we had a storyboard class at the Kubert School that was kind of like that. Except we used Storyboard Pro, which mm -hmm. sucks. I hate that program. I think everyone in the school hated that program. I've never used that. What's what's the deal with it? It's It's a program where you storyboard, and it is it has a drawing aspect to it. But it is a terrible drawing software. So mm. it is it is like, okay, draw with this. And it gives you like <laughs> just the worst, like worse than Microsoft Paint like type of oh. tools. <laughs> and it's like, oh, here you go, animate with this. Make something out of this. I did one of the videos on my channel is like the uh we had to take a sound clip from either a podcast or a video or something and animate to it. So mm -hmm. I took the Alex Jones rant about the Star Wars prequels <laughs> and animated his That's rant. Awesome. He he understands it a lot better than I do. It's a surprising grasp that he has. You wouldn't expect him to be a prequels fan. <laughs> yeah, Alex Jones is fucking weird. I have you have you seen the documentary they made about him? Which one? I saw the one the the one that like gets taken off of YouTube all the time, the Bohemian Grove one oh, I, don't, that? I, don't, I don't know if it's that one it's the one with the like song parody at the end i have seen the song parody i don't think i've seen the you're talking about the like the folk song little bones of christian murder scum there were giant death factories keeping babies alive and selling their body parts yeah the the yeah the folk song like hipster 
parody that they did with his rants, but they like put it in a documentary, which is hilarious. And it like plays as the credits start to roll. And it's so good. But, uh, yeah, sometimes he has his moments of clarity that just shock me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspected that it was a bit kind of like yeah. over the top. Yeah. But no, the Bohemian Grove video, it's from like, it's from like 20 years ago, this video. He's super, Ooh. he's super young in it. And uh, it, it's about him. He goes he, in California, I think, mm -hmm. I think it's like Northern California. There's a place where these, uh, these like um, social elites gather and do like a ritual out in the woods and they burn an owl effigy. And they do these, like, chants. And he has these, like, pictures of, like, Ronald Reagan and and uh, and Richard Nixon and, and oh, Bill Clinton and, what you know, George W. Bush. And they're all there. And, and he, like, he infiltrates this place because it's, like, invite only. But he, like, he dresses up and he goes to this place and he films a, a secret video. Whoa. That's funny. Anyways, I gotta yeah, if you can find it. Yeah. I've been uh I've been watching a lot of the uh the like Rankin Bass movies, the like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer people. Uh yeah. They have you have you heard about their uh the stuff that they did before Rudolph? No. They did this um, TV show in like the 50s, 60s called The New Adventures of Pinocchio. Here's Pinocchio, what a happy lad since the day he lost his spring. He can walk and talk and fly, do anything I try. And it starts out just like... You know, the first first few episodes are just, like, telling the story of Pinocchio, this little puppet boy. You know, he gets into shenanigans. But then, out of nowhere, it, like, completely pivots to this other guy who, like, isn't in the story at all. And it ends up being, like, a like an anti-communist thing. Okay. <laughs> like, out of nowhere. Like, what, one of the plots is, like, there's a there's a space launch that's supposed to happen and then it gets sabotaged by these monkeys that are actually communists or something and this character who isn't Pinocchio by the way has to stop it. Yeah, they also did a did a feature length uh animated um origin story for Smokey the Bear. I feel like I have seen that one. In New Mexico, many years ago, a fire trapped a bear. A tiny cub was saved by the ranger who named him Smokey Bear. I feel that that sounds familiar. It's it's pretty good. I'm I've been very into the like overly cute 1960s you know, stop motion animated mm -hmm. kids. They're all super cute. Okay, so I have more questions. Another question. Okay. Who would you say are your biggest artistic inspirations? Hmm. I love Matt Groening, obviously. I watched Futurama and The Simpsons, like, so much as a kid. So, like, he had an effect. Um, hmm. I also really like the, uh, the Klasky Shupo cartoons, like Rugrats and stuff, mm -hmm. they're they're super good. They had an effect. Um, who else? Oh, I love Tove Janssen, the the artist behind Moomin. She's awesome. Uh, okay. Here's a follow up question. There may be some overlap with this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you were putting cartoonists on Mount Rushmore. Who's going on there? Ooh. See, because now that previous question, I was having to think about their effect on me personally. Now I'm having to think about, like, the world in general. Yeah. Hmm. Matt Groening is still on there. 
for sure. He's just the goat. Hmm. Hmm. See, I want to say Robert Crumb, but he's he's kind of slimy. You know, he's kind of a scumbag a little. Mm -hmm. But he's so good. <laughs> I mean, look at our Mount Rushmore that we have now. There's a couple scumbags yeah, I mean, on there right now. <laughs> yeah. True. True. Okay. Yeah. Robert's going up there too. Matt Groening, Robert Crumb. Uh. <sighs> Hmm. Berg would go up there because he made Spongebob and Spongebob just like blew up. Hmm. Oof. Who would the fourth guy be? I don't know. Because I, I don't want to be basic and just be like, oh, Walt, Walt Disney. Ooh, Ub Iwerks. The actual creator. <laughs> He would go up there for sure. He doesn't get enough credit. Yeah. But yeah, I, th I think that's my... my okay, so you, you said... You said Crum, Steve Hillenberg, Matt Groening, and Ub Iwerks? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a good list. I also put Crum on there for a different reason. For like... Well, I guess you didn't say what reason. Just because he's like the underground guy. Like, he's, like, the most yeah, famous he, represents. Yeah. And uh, I, who who else did I put? I, I, I was having this yeah. conversation with my buddies the other night. I yeah, think I put, you... I put Jack Kirby on there for, like, mm -hmm. the superhero comics. Um, yeah. I can't remember if I said George Harriman or Charles Schultz for, like, comic strips. Ooh, Schultz is a good one. Hmm. But but yeah, I, I, I was thinking like, okay, give me give me like an underground guy, a mainstream guy, a, a comic strip guy, and I, I don't remember what the fourth one was. Pick pick somebody, just a personal oh, favorite, probably. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. I'm I'm cutting out pieces for a collage right now. <laughs> oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. We've talked about this that you like collage. Mhm. Mm so, how often do you make collages? Uh, pretty often. It's been it's been my poison as of late because drawings. It's lately it's been hard for me to uh, do like a concrete comic from start to finish like I used to be able to do. Mhm. Mm so lately I've just been kind of, you know, satisfying my creative urges with, uh, with collages, lots of, uh, like kids science textbooks from the 1990s. Excellent images. Where, where do you, where do you find those though? Um, Cause I, I remember you said that to me one time, but I yeah. was like, okay, where do you find that though? Do I just um, go, go to a school and be like, do you have any textbooks you don't need? <laughs> do you have any outdated textbooks? I know you do if you're a public school. <laughs> <laughs> One, ones that you're not still using. Yeah, like. ones, ones that are out of commission. Uh, so some of them I got at the Goodwill bins. There's the, the big Goodwill in Little Rock. I found just like a whole stack of like middle school science textbooks that were really good. Um, also, Dixon Street Books in Fayetteville has a lot of good books. Lots of good books for cutting up. <laughs> okay, are there any art forms that you might like to try in the future that you haven't hmm. experimented in? I know we just talked about stop motion, but I would love to make like a full stop motion, at least a short. I think that would be really cool. Um, maybe like, I think it would also be cool to uh, design costumes, like for movies and stuff. I think that would be super cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Have you ever seen the costumes that like Mobius designed for Dune that never got made? The, uh, no, I haven't. I don't think so. Those are really cool. 
I mean, it's a shame that that version never got made. Which one? The... Which one was it? it it's not the David Lynch one. Yeah, because I was going to say, I was like, I thought the David Lynch one got made. Yeah, the David Lynch one got made. There was in... Uh, Jodorowsky? Is that his name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Mobius' friend. He was going to make one. The guy that he made the inkle with, I think. I think he was yeah. helped make the inkle. They were going to make a version of, of Dune, and it never came to be. Damn, that's a tragedy. Have you seen the new Dune? Yeah, I didn't really like it that much, TBH. Controversial. Controversial. <laughs> A lot of my friends liked it, but I didn't really like it that much. Interesting. I, I felt the same way. What was your reasoning for not liking it? Well, okay. My whole thing is, if you're doing... what When was the, the book written? The 60s, right? I have no idea. Probably. Maybe. My whole thing is, a lot of the source material for science fiction is from, like, the 60s and 70s. So it's going to be corny and cheesy, you know? Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to lean into it more, but they were, it was too serious. Like, I like that the David Lynch one was kind of campy, you know? I, I need a little bit of cheese in my movie. Yeah. And, like... The lack of cheese made it cheesy. You know what I mean? Yeah, this taking itself so seriously. Yeah, it was too serious. Also, I just don't really like Timothy Chalamet. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't wow. know what it... You're going to get this video taken down now. Criticizing so Chalamet. Me. So uh, so you're not going to see Wonka, is what I'm hearing. Uh, no. <laughs> well, actually, I might. I kind of want to just to just to see. Have you, have you seen the movie Snowpiercer? Yeah. You know about the Wonka Piercer theory? No. No, does it, is it a shared universe? Yeah, it, and I'm, I'm a believer. I've, I've been convinced. <laughs> Cause you know how, uh, you know how, spoiler alert for Snowpiercer, you know how at the end, it, it's like revealed that, or not at the end, but you know how it's revealed that children are, are what's powering the train? It's been so long, I don't remember <laughs> anything. So, <laughs> so in the movie, there the the whole plot of the movie is, uh, uh, what's his name? Captain America. Yeah, Chris <laughs> Evans. <laughs> he, he's um, trying to stop the train because they're using children to power the train. And the theory is the reason why they're using children is because Oompa Loompas have gone extinct. Okay. And children are the only people small enough to fit in the place of an Oompa Loompa. Okay, I'm following you. Makes sense. And, and the plot is that the, like, conductor of the train, I forget his name, but he he's the grown up uh, Charlie. Okay. Who inherited the Wonka, you know. The Wonka factory. death machine. Yeah. Yeah, and and he he just the world was going crazy, so he invented a train, which is something that like he that you know Wonka would do. He's like a whimsical transportation guy. Yeah, he invented that nightmare boat. <laughs> Yeah, if he invented the nightmare boat, you know, it's, it's, he would, he would invent a nightmare train, too. Yeah, that runs on people. That it's runs insane. on Oompa Loompas, and then it runs on people. Oh, so you're saying Oompa Loompas aren't people? I thought they were like a, are they like a, I thought the whole thing was that they were like a, like a, wait, I'm thinking of the Futurama Oompa Loompas, the Grunka Lunkas. <laughs> no, Oompa Loompas, they're like from an island, aren't they? Oh my god, I was just racist, dude. Against orange <laughs> people, yeah. Horrible. Over. I'm sorry to any Oompa Loompas watching. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so we've got our last question. Wahoo! Favorite Life. comics. What's some of your favorite mm -hmm. comics? Ooh, I like, so the Simpsons and Futurama comics, the like spinoff comics, I was obsessed as a kid. The My Little Pony comics are very, very good. I like those. Any of the, uh, I just got a, uh, actually, this is, this is a true shame, dude. Speaking of racism, I just got at Dixon Street Books and like a vintage Zap comic of Robert Crumb. Yeah. Got it. And it had to be the one with so much blackface in it. I didn't even know when I bought it because it was like sealed in the plastic. Yeah. And I was so excited to get home. And I was I was showing my roommates. I was like, guys, I got this awesome, <laughs> like, actually old Robert Crumb comic. Take a look. And then I open it and it's just like literally. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean like i don't know whenever i think about robert crumb and his wife because she also made freaky comics yeah that was a that was aileen that was aileen, later yeah. yeah aileen klumsky crumb yeah but like sweet that they found each other rest in peace <laughs> yeah okay any others is that is that yeah. your list? See, because most of my favorite comics are just spinoffs of t of TV shows that I like, you know. But yeah. I think that like comics in general, I feel. Oh, I love uh, Jason Shiga, the Meanwhile guy. That was genius. He's he's a genius. I haven't heard of that one. What's that? It's like, oh, I wish I had a copy with me so I could show you. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure comic, but it's done in a really creative way with, like, pull tabs on the side, like, of the pages. It's mm. hard to explain without, like, a visual example, but it's so cool. It's super awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I also really like the Simpsons books. That's kind of what like got me into reading comics was mm -hmm. that, that that's like one of the ones that they had at the grocery store when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, I don't know how they still had like newsstand comic books when I was a kid. Cause like yeah, you always, too. you always hear about how those like disappeared in the nineties, but this had to have been like 2007 or something like. No, me too. Cause I used to, uh, I used to buy uh mad magazine at Walmart yeah. It, didn't they, like, stop doing that, like, pretty recently? Or, or is Mad Magazine still a thing? I think they still print some, but I think it's not original material anymore. It's, like, reprints of older stuff. Ah, uh, ooh. Do you remember the, uh, the, like, the Nickelodeon, like, fake, uh, like, tabloid for kids? And <laughs> I had, don't like, know drama between like cartoon characters so, <laughs> like oh is is bart simpson dating like this character from a different cartoon or whatever it was super <laughs> cool it was so, i'll have to i'll have to find some and send them to you because they're so hilarious imagine that's your job is to write fake drama for imaginary characters for kids <laughs> hey that's just what the paparazzi does anyway to make up fake stories yeah Make up fake stories about fake people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you have anything that you wanted to show? You said that you had... Hmm. What? I mean, most of what I had was just collage materials. <laughs> have you ever heard of Jackie Magazine? Uh, I don't think so. It's not... Not Jackie Kennedy. Okay. This other person named Jackie. But Jackie Magazine from 1979. Okay. It's a teen girl magazine. And it has a lot of good uh, comics in it. Like, a lot of the comics have a really cool style. But there's a... Uh, oh, I'll have to find it. There's this page that's like, Top 10 bad boys that we have crushes on or whatever. And on the list is... Uh, Oh, let me find the page. It's so good. Give me just a sec. 
Oh, yes. Our favorite bad guys. On the list is Tom of Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> and literally Darth Vader. And Kermit. <laughs> Kermit's a bad guy? It says we've classed him as a bad guy because he keeps playing hard to get with poor Miss Piggy. <laughs> oh, and Animal, too. The rest of them are just like, you know, Mick Jagger and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's pretty good. Nice. I, I remember at a flea market, I found a uh, another magazine that was, like, really good collage material. It was, a like, a farming magazine. Oh, that's from awesome. 1970, and it had, like, a bunch of tractors and, uh, like, combines and different animals. I love, like, uh, farming equipment, just in general. I think I think big machines are really cool. Yeah, I feel like little kids, not not saying you're a little kid, but like little kids always have like a uh, like a farming equipment phase or like yeah. like a combine or tractor phase. They're just cool. It's it's just like how does that work? It's so big. When I was little, I used to like imagine like building equipment to fall asleep. <laughs> And I'm, I'm so serious. Instead of counting sheep, I would just, yeah. like, imagine, like... See, children yearn for the factories. Let them return. <laughs> Let them return to work. I know. I was I was ready to, to become a machine. But, yeah stuff. I love old magazines. Yeah. Ooh, here's a here's a good piece of collage material. This uh I don't even know what this is like a diagram of. It looks like a I don't know, it's just a bunch of tubes. It's like it's like the life cycle of fossil fuel or something. Yeah, it's it's like I I think that's exactly what it is actually. Cuz it's all just like going to you know cars cars and trucks and things. I saw a truck driving on the sidewalk today. Oh, nice. Right in front of my house. <laughs> was, yeah, brother. Thankfully no one in the south walks. Yeah. You just, you just drive everywhere. <laughs> We're too busy farming. <laughs> and, and, you know, cooking mess. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? Oh, of course. I, I watched it last night with my friends. I had somehow never seen it before. And I it's think a, it's my favorite movie now. It's a good one. It's Mike Judge. I love Mike Judge. See, I, and that's why I was so surprised that I hadn't seen it before because I love Mike Judge. The, like, the Fuddruckers scene in the beginning? Uh huh. Genius. <laughs> so, I love that movie. I think of that every time I see a Fuddruckers now. Now I'm gonna. It changed me. Yeah. So that part where he's like, I'm actually supposed to be getting out of prison today. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a funny movie. So good. I love Mike Judge. His his style of humor is right up my alley. Yeah, but when you see him like talk in interviews, he's so like quiet and reserved. Like Yeah. Doesn't seem like the type of guy who would be funny, like or have all these funny yeah. ideas. But I feel like that's how I think that's how like a lot of super like super funny people are. They just sit back and observe. You know? Yeah. That's where they get their material. <laughs> That's why King of the Hill's so real. Like, I feel like I've met Hank Hill before multiple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I had this bus driver 
his name was Spud. I don't know if that was his real name, but his name was Spud. And he was just this, like, this super Southern guy with, like, three teeth in his mouth. And he was, like, super, super, like, he was super big. And one time, also, he couldn't see, which is, like, crazy because he was a bus driver. Mm -hmm. And I know this because the font on his phone would always be, like, the biggest size you could set it to. And one time, I'm not even kidding you. I saw, like, over his shoulder, him send a text to his wife that said, I'm in a meeting right now. <laughs> but he was just driving a bus full of school children. <laughs> hey, don't, don't eavesdrop on him. He's got, he's got stuff going on at home. <laughs> I exposed him. <laughs> All right, well, we should probably be wrapping it up soon. It was nice talking uh -huh. with you. It was super fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can I see what you were, were you working on anything? Uh, not really. Just cutting stuff up. This, uh, yeah. Lots of, this, here's another cool diagram of, I don't know. The, the water cycle. Yeah. The water cycle. Yeah. I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my drawing, it kind of tells a story. Yeah. Let's uh, see. We were talking about a chef in the beginning, then the American Girl doll, and then Alex Jones. And then I awesome. started to draw Homer Simpson and lost confidence. And then I just started drawing you. <laughs> we, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Because <laughs> I like lost, I don't know, I lost confidence in the Simpsons. So. Uh, you always got to have confidence in the Simpsons. <laughs> have faith in the Simpsons. Right. <laughs> We'll end on that note. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thank and you. hopefully we'll have you on again sometime. Yes, please. Have right, a good night. Bye. Thank you.